Satan said after all this, I had enough. <laughs> I had enough. <laughs> I had enough of this. So the devil came in. And you know what the devil did, that old devil did? He raised up something to conquer against the Great Awakenings. So from this branch right here, it continues onward. And from this branch, we continue through one of the greatest successes of Satan, the Counter-Reformation. The Counter-Reformation. The Counter-Reformation started by Ignatius de Loyola. He was the founder of the Jesuits. The devil was going to raise a demonic army. And these guys weren't preachers. These guys were intellectuals. These guys were the scholars. And the devil was going to raise these men to conquer against this, the preachers, the Great Awakening revivals. Ignatius de Loyola, as he founded the Jesuit order, he was going to counterattack. They were so sick and tired of this. They were so sick and tired of this book that brought the revivals, that brought Great Awakenings. In fact, one Catholic Jesuit cried about the King James Bible. The Bible, that serpent with head erect and eyes flashing, threatens us with its venom while it trails along the ground, shall be changed into a rod as soon as we are able to seize it. For three centuries past, that's right, for three centuries past, this cruel asp left us no repose. You well know with what folds it entwines us and with what fangs it gnaws us. So thus they began their counterattack against the King James Bible. Ignatius de Loyola, he founded the Jesuit order to counterattack. This man went through four inquisitions. This is how demonic and scary these people are, all right? The Jesuits. This man, he went through four inquisitions to prove his Catholic devotion. Didn't you know that? He went through four different inquisitions to prove his Catholic devotion. Demonically enslaved. In fact, his spiritual exercises book taught brainwashing and control of his followers, including the very air that they breathe. That's how strong the brainwashing control was of the Jesuits and Loyola. And the Jesuits started to counterattack. You know, so I'm going to add this. This is not mentioned in my previous history, so I'm going to add this one. So the devil started attacking, and how he started to attack is through secular powers. Here came in the elites. Uh, the Jesuits started to counterattack. They were being kicked out by Catholic nations. Ever remember the KJV translator? Translation: Their plot failed. So they were getting kicked out, kicked out, kicked out. They were losing power. Catholic nations were even kicking them out. Didn't you know even the Vatican kicked them out? The Pope and the Vatican finally kicked them out. And the Jesuits knew that they lost their power and they had to regain it. So it is said that the Jesuits, how they regained their power, they used the ones who were still in power that time in leading. The Masons. They used the high-ranking Masons that time. And there they found Rothschild as well. Through Rothschild and the Masons, the Masonic Oath was founded in a Jesuit university. Rothschild and Adam Weishaupt, who founded the Illuminati, which eventually produced all kinds of elites that came out eventually, all came out, was started in a Jesuit university. From there, when the birth of America came to the scene, that's where Benjamin Franklin and some of the people, you'll see Masonic symbols all over the government. Although God founded, Amer although God's hand was upon the founding of America and started the revivals, Satan was on its coattails to produce some greater evil behind the scene. That's where the great elite powers came from. The Jesuits, they regained their power through one powerful figure, Napoleon Bonaparte. Through Napoleon Bonaparte, they used that man where they founded, the, where they got the Knights of Malta and other high organizations going. Napoleon started to conquer Catholic nation, Catholic nation. Jesuits were doing assassinations through the Catholic royalty. And through that, Napoleon got the Pope into prison and forced him to restore the Jesuit order. That's how the Jesuit order reclaimed its power. And from there, that's where all the high elites from Rothschild and the Masons and other high-ranking Jews, they all came from this bunch. Why? Because it started out through something demonic, something sinister. It came from the Jesuits. Through there, the devil was going underground with these elites. While the people were rejoicing, souls were getting 
saved, he was going underground, slowly building up his power through high-ranking elites. You got the elites. Political power fell. So, polit so political power fell through these figures. Now he's got to attack this book. The, K the King James Bible also fell. The King James Bible also fell. How? Through higher and lower criticism. The Jesuits' plan, they always go 50 to 100 years ahead of time. So while everyone was going on through their great reformation, in came those Jesuits behind the scenes, planning a bigger plot. They were quiet from the 1500s to the 1900s to successfully destroy the King James Bible-believing churches today. They decided to attack by infiltrating schools. It is estimated that they infiltrated more than a hundred school, more than hundred schools and university, more than a hundred schools and universities. These Jesuits infiltrated. They first raised up questions against the Bible's authenticity through higher and lower criticism in France. That's where they started. That's where Voltaire, that's where all the great enlightenment, great awakening, man, not the enlightenment, but the great, while the great awakening was going, they got their great enlightenment going. And through that, because they respected intellectual scholarship so much, that's what the Jesuits used. So they started to go through France first. Through France, they started to question the Bible. See, if you want to get rid of revival, you got to get rid of, rid of a revival by getting rid of the book. So question the authenticity of the book first. Through higher and lower criticism in France, they had the French Enlightenment. Then it spread to Germany, the heart of Luther's Reformation. That's where German rationalism came from. So guess what? The Jesuits, who were brilliant intellectuals, they took advantage of that. Then guess what? It eventually went to where? The heart of the Reformation, Germany. Then it went to England, the heart of the King James Bible. The heart of the King James Bible in England. And that's where you had English deism, right? English deism. See, always intellectual, intellectual. See how the devil used it? Then he finally went to America, the heart of the Great Awakening Revival. You see how Satan slurred behind the scenes? Because God started where? The Reformation in Germany. Then he moved to England. Then he went to America. Satan realized this. Let's go behind and knock them out one by one. Welcome to America today. So question, question the Bible. But it didn't go into apostasy like that. It just started out with questioning the Bible. Then you got those stinking philosophers who came in. The philosophers, they took the higher and lower criticism against the KJV. They took the higher and lower criticism attack of the KJV from the Jesuits from France, Germany, and the philosophers who were intellectuals shared some of their beliefs and they used that to not just attack the Bible now, but to attack Christianity itself. You see a little leaven leaven at the whole lump. And that's how Satan succeeds in making the whole world apostate. They revived, see all the way, don't forget Satan's headquarters. You can't forget Alexandria and Rome. You can't forget that. Satan revived its system once more. Through the revival of that system, they came up with their own human philosophies that critiqued the Bible. You had David Hume, John Locke, Thomas Hobbes, Rene Descartes, Francis Bacon, Friedrich Nietzsche. Because the Jesuits were spreading criticisms against the Bible with higher and lower criticism, they took some of that argument and changed it into what? Humanism and Christian modernism. So what happened after that? Now you got the schools that fell. So schools fell. Schools were not saved. Political power was not saved. Then you got another person. Who was he? Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin came to the scene. And what he, he, you know what? He was actually a, the, a student who majored in theology. So the devil kept his eyes on some people who were grown up and raised in Christianity. And he was going to use them for his glory, the devil. And the devil kept an eye on them. And God forbid it will happen to anyone here. But it is happening right now today. That's what the devil's doing. He's keeping an eye on you. And he kept an eye on Darwin. But he started to question our creation with Origin of Species, his book. Now you finally had a scientific way to get rid of God. 
So what do you think the atheists, the secular humanists did? They took advantage of that. Now they have a scientific argument against God. They joined the bandwagon and they use that to critique the Great Awakening revival preachings and promote their evolution ideas more. And guess what happened? Science fell. Science fell. I think the guy's name is Spencer, I'm not sure. But Spencer, he even said this. If you get rid of evolution, then we are forced to follow the moral rules of what Christianity has preached about. And I refuse to do that. See, now science fell. That's why they joined that bandwagon. Now, higher and lower criticism start to open doors. Now the Bible completely fell with these guys, Westcott and Hort. Westcott and Hort knocked off the King James Bible. They said, let's make a new English Bible. So the first modern Bi English modern Bible after the KJV was the revised version. With the revised version, you know what they took? Back at Alexandria. They took the manuscripts back at Alexandria. And through this, they took the manuscripts and started to build up modern Bibles from that. And guess what they did? It opened the door for others to make their own revisions of the KJV. Do you not realize that from Westcott and Hort, when they, once they opened the doors, you know how many modern versions came out since then? More than 200 different English Bibles. How much more? How much more do you need to correct that book, huh? See? So guess what happened? Significant. The Bible fell. The Bible fell after that. When the Bible fell, then the devil start to raise up another one. Oh, here came Karl Marx. Karl Marx. And when Karl Marx came to the scene, he started to promote the ideas where communism came from. He created socialism on how the government was not getting control of making sure everyone had an equal wealth. Since he was a journalist, he had the power of the media to spread his propaganda. Many sinners convicted by the Great Awakening preaching, they wanted the government to take care of them. <coughs> Excuse me. So his beliefs attracted them. So instead of working for themselves, which endangered many to fall prey and being dependent on the government. Just like what? Just like, remember deja vu back then? Let's trust this government here. They're the ones that can take care of us. They're the ones that know what they're doing. See what Satan was doing? He's trying to revive what he did back then. And he used Karl Marx to do it. And guess what? Karl Marx, guess what? Just like Darwin. You know where he was raised under a Christian branch. He was a Lutheran. See, Satan will keep an eye on you. And guess what happened? Because of that, government fell. So the devil was raising up one by one by one. Then you got Hollywood. That blasted Hollywood. Hollywood came to the scene. And you know what? You'd be surprised. A lot of the famous stars and actors and musicians, didn't you know they were all, a lot of them were raised from Christian churches? But how did they fall? How did they be... Uh, fall into sin and promote sin and glamorize sin and start to get the younger generations to endorse sin because of this blasted thing called Hollywood. And Hollywood glamorized sin. It glamorized the worldly music. It glamorized the worldly dressing. It glamorized the world. It glamorized sin and be glamorized fornication. And because of that, some of them, you got, you'd be surprised. Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley, some of those people, they were raised up in uh, Christian churches. But what happened? The devil started to put in Hollywood where they want to become stars, famous, and promote sin. In fact, it's really sad when you hear some of Elvis Presley's music. He was struggling with sin. He, he even confessed in one of his songs, you can tell. He was struggling with his sin. So because of that, Christianity was starting to die out in morals and worldliness was being promoted. That's why you got young generations today who act who talk, who dress, who like the music and the taste of what? What Hollywood is doing. If you don't believe me, just look at them then. And look at yourself. Don't you share a lot in common with them? See that? So, the, so what happened? The world fell. The world fell. 
So that's how the devil used Hollywood. In fact, what's very interesting as well is that at the birth of Hollywood, a lot of it was from those elites that came through the scenes. A lot of them were Masons, and some of them were those Jews who were connected with the Jesuit elites. So guess what? Propaganda and garbage and wickedness was spreading even more and more. Another person the devil used was Sigmund Freud. Freud came to the scene. And Freud, when he came to the scene, he started to give psychological explanations for human guilt. And he criticized the kind of this kind of preaching. You know that? He criticized that. Why? Because you're not helping them out. Don't produce human guilt. That's his philosophy. And he started to give this psychological babble where people start to sear their conscience with a hot iron. So when the Great Awakening preachers start to convict these people of sin, they got an explanation away through Freud. And guess what? Conscience fell. Nothing was safe anymore. Now you got another one. Okay? The devil's not done. See what he's setting up one by one by one. Then came the cults. While the Great Awakenings, Christianity was the dominant mainstream. Protestant Christianity was the dominant mainstream. But then the cults came in. And these cults started to come in during that time period. The Mormons through Brigham Young sprouted out in Utah. Jehovah's Witnesses by Charles Russell sprouted out in New York. Christian Science by Mary Baker Eddy. Seventh-day Adventism by Ellen G. White. The Church of Christ by Alexander Campbell sprouted all over the South. The Charismatic with their healings and speaking of tongues sprouted out in California. The Hyper-Dispensationalists by Cornelius Dam and New Jersey. And due to this mess of so many what? What, what, what do they all say? We're Christian. You, you hear that, right? We're Christian. We're Christian. We're Christian. We're Christian. With this whole mess going on of everyone professing to be a Christian, guess what happened? Finally, people today are so sick and tired of it, seeing Christians fighting amongst themselves. Let's put aside our differences, unite together under the banner of Christianity, and the Pope, the Vatican, finally succeeded in getting all the churches to what? To, to join together, and the Pope would host these events in the Vatican with the Christian religions and the world religions together, and thus hosted by the Pope. Why? To go back to what the devil always wanted to do. He wanted, he's going to get Rome to be in power once more at Revelation 17. He wanted all these sins to start spreading out. Mother Church was making a comeback ever since, what, the time of Jesus Christ. Pagan Rome followed its coattails all the way. So guess what happened now? Now churches fell. Churches fell. Now let me close it right here. Let me ask you this one question, alright? If you got political powers that fall today, political high rich powers that fall today, you got the government that fall. You got the schools that fall. You got the Bible that fell away. Science fell away. The whole world falling away. Churches falling away. Not only that, if there's nothing else to turn to but your own conscience, but you got your conscience falling away, what will save you from and give you Bible-believing truth? Absolutely nothing. Amen. Absolutely nothing. The devil covered all bases so that no one can find Bible-believing truth anywhere. Even if you're not deceived by political powers, he'll use your conscience to deceive you. Even if you have the right Bible, he'll use the schools to make you critique the Bible eventually. If you're not deceived by the government, he'll use the churches you go to to deceive you. Absolutely nothing was saved. And God forbid that any one of you Christians out there are caught and deceived by that mess. So the churches fell. The churches fell. So nothing was safe anymore. The devil succeeded. Thus, his counter-reformation and modernism, which eventually led to modernism, it all spread out. And thus the Great Awakenings fell away as we hit the 20th and 21st century. But the Lord raised up a few good men during these last days to fight against the counter-reformation and modernism today, which we come into eventually. Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim of San Jose Bio Baptist Church. 
Have you ever asked this question that if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you can go to heaven? My friend, it's so simple to get saved. You first got to realize that you can't go to heaven because you've sinned against God. And God, as a holy judge, he has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you feel sorry over your sinful condition. And if you do, there is hope for you. You see, Jesus, who is God, left heaven, came down here on earth, died on the cross, raised himself from the dead. Why did he do all that? So his blood can wash away the sins for you. So you see, that's your only way to heaven, of what he did on the cross, and not what you do in cleaning up all your sins, and going to church, getting baptized, or doing any sort of good work. It's faith alone in what Jesus did on the cross. If you can do that, then all you have to do is say that to God. You might say, well, I don't know how to say it. Can you help me out? Sure, you can say it this way. Dear God, I am sorry for being a sinner. I believe Jesus is God who died and resurrected so his blood can wash away my sins. I trust in that alone and not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my friend. If someone were to ask you, how did you get saved? It's very simple, right? What did you do? I just put my faith on what Jesus did on the cross. That's it. My friend, congratulations on your salvation. Right now, because Satan can't damn you to hell, what he's going to try to do now is try to ruin your life. And he did a very good job in this world. That's why it's so hard to find truth, and there are so many lies with a gazillion different churches, different Bibles, different beliefs, different religions. So my friend, it is so important to grow in truth and get involved in a Bible-believing work that can save you from a lot of trouble. There are four things we recommend for you to do, which is found in the resources link below. Number one, get involved in a Bible-believing church near you. Number two, Study the King James Bible issue and have only that kind of Bible, no other modern version Bible. Number three, study dispensationalism so you can find the right doctrine and truth. Number four, study only under Bible-believing teachers. My friend, this is all explained further in the resources link below, so please click on it and get to work in a Bible-believing work because you only have one life to live for Him and you don't want to waste it away by the devil. And I'll be inside that great palace and the smoke will be so thick. I'll drop to my knees and I'll drop to my face like those Navy SEALs do. And I'll start crawling. I'll start crawling. And I'll look down that uh, ivory aisle there and I'll see a, a throne. And I'll see some feet that got holes in them and they got jewel sandals on. Then I'll pull myself up to those feet and I'll cry on those feet like that woman that cried on his feet and wiped the tears with her hair. Hey, glory to God, you're going to let him do the shining. You're going to say, oh God, thank you. Hallelujah. And the angels will worship and the cherubim will worship and the seraphim will worship. And thank God an independent Baptist will worship. Another song said, Once I was straying in sin's dark valley, no hope within could I see. They searched through heaven and found a Savior Amen. to save a poor oh, soul like me. Woo! Glory to God. He stood out there in my Solomon, he's go, Ho, ho, ho! Jesus saves! <laughs> the Bible saves from God's. And he's preaching, and the people that's ringing the bell, they be, uh, uh, <laughs> And he'd stand up, and, uh, and people walk up and they said, Wow, Santa Claus preaching. What? Then you enter the throne of glory. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. The Father opens up his arms. Come on, there's a banner raised up in the skies with all the angels. You go to the Not through Muhammad, he did not do anything for you. He's not through Buddha, 
is not through the commandments. It's only through faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm just going to stay still and I'm just going to study at home. Uh, I, watch, I watch preaching on the TV. Yeah. Yeah. You can turn the preacher off. You ain't going to turn me off. like your skin turning to gold or something, you don't know what's going on. It's about two more steps, here's that crowd. Hi, how you doing? Hey, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey, like that? Way down there at the edge of that street, there's the Lord up there in glory. And down he comes off that throne. He always would come down for a sitter. <laughs> and he comes down there, well done, now, good and faithful, serving of the joy of our Lord. Now, little boy's heart going down there, it says, Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Then he laid down on that table, and Dr. Grace got out the scalpel, and he removed that old cold stony heart out of my friend. Oh, he threw it in the trash can, and he put a brand new heart into my friend's chest. And when he when he woke up, uh, he looked around and he said, "Oh my." Everything has been changed. Everything looks different. Oh, I'm so happy now that I had the heart operation. Hey, praise God, there's no other Savior like our God. Oh, better. Better.